goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? This is VC. Welcome to another episode, right? We finally got a new setup. So the podcast, if you listen on video, will be a little different now. If you're audio, we still have the high quality for you, okay? Uh, I want to cover today um, for about 20 minutes. And Annabelle, you'll tell me when it's been about 20 minutes, okay? Uh, in regards to one of the things I've been speaking about the last uh, couple weeks, right? I just finished up a tour where we went to Vegas. We did two places in Southern California, and then I rounded out in Scottsdale, and I came back to Miami last night. And uh, I talked about many things, right, in these um, free trainings that I was doing and ways of promoting our business and stuff. But one of them in particular that I want to cover with you today is everybody hits a juncture in their life with particular topics, right? where we have what I call what's available to you versus what you commit to or seek, right? One is a choice, a decision, a commitment. The other one is just, hey, it's always there. It's available to you, right? As an example, um, I can go to the park. I would have to pay to access the gym or, or, or get access to it by making some other commitment, right? Especially if one of them is farther. Now I have to make the decision to drive farther, invest my money, right? It's different. Versus the park or anything outside, I can just show up and it's always available to me, right? So I wanted to make this point because whether in real estate, entrepreneurship, right? When we start, of course, we just take what's available to us. Of course. The, you're starting. You don't know. It's a new territory. You're like, oh, okay, cool. I'm just going to come over here. Oh, this person said they have this. Oh, this person mentioned this. Oh, you need to listen to this guy. He's cool. And I'm just going to go. But eventually, right? Again, you're going to hit a crossroads. Most people take just what's available to them and never take it past that, right? That's the frequency and the, the thought process and the path of the majority, right? Typically the average or below average. The people who are elite, the people who really take it to another level, now commit to something. They join a tribe, they get a coach, a mentor, right? It's like, think of, uh, of it as a martial artist. If I said, I want to be the Kung Fu master of the planet, I'm going to find my sensei, I'm going to dedicate my time, my money, my resources, my life to that mentor, to that sensei, right? Could I get to a good level just getting what's available to me? Maybe, but again, if I want to take it there, I'm going to commit. And I wrote down four things that I want to cover with you today briefly for a few minutes to wrap your head around this because the decision has to be made. I looked at real estate through this lens. Am I just doing real estate or do I want to be the best? I'm at the crossroads. I want to be the best. Okay. So number one is this. What level do you want to take it to? Your acting, right? Real estate, your sales, your communication, your relationships, whatever it is. What level do you want to take it to? If you want to take it to that all-star level, you have to commit to that level and make a decision, I'm doing this, and be very purposeful, because a lot gets attached to this, right? Clarity, purpose, conviction, discipline, versus, well, it's not a priority to me, um, you know, I'll handle it when I handle it, if I need something, I'll let you know, right? That's the difference there, but what level, right? So make a list right now, if you're watching this, in all the categories of your life that are a priority to, a priority to you or important to you. Maybe right now you want to really better your sales skills. Maybe right now you really want to better yourself in the financial department. Maybe you have some self-exploration to do. You're like, ah, oh, man, I really want to build my self-esteem, my confidence, or whatever it is. And ask yourself, am I going to take just what's available, or am I going to commit to something to take it to that level? Because you need to determine. If you want anything like above average, right, you're going to have to commit to something and take it to that level. I look at even the beginning portions of me doing self-improvement, waking up earlier, reading. A lot of those decisions, I took what was available to me, but reading and the gym and all these other things that I was doing required me paying money and dedicating time and resources and focus and energy and discipline to those things. It was an accumulation of this complete package of what I was willing to commit to to achieve what I wanted to achieve because initially that vision of what I was going to be and who I was going to be in the future and what I was going to have required me to commit to that level because the ask and the desire of what I wanted, right? The desire and the ask, meaning what you want and then what it's going to ask of you, whew, they have to line up. But a lot of people ask or desire the world and their ask is down here. I want to be a gazillionaire, but I want to work once a year. I'm not going to work, dude, right? So we have to make sure that these things are in balance. What level? Again, be honest with yourself. If you don't want to take something to a high level, that's fine. Take what's available to you. That's the smart route. 
But again, you want to be the top dog, you're going to have to commit. You're going to have to make that decision and take that step and really make it a priority, all right? Who? The next question is who? Because either way, you need to look at who. Who are you going to dedicate your time to? Who are you going to study? Who are you going to learn from? Right? This is why we continue, like with Team BC and Team BC University and everything I've created, same thing with my real estate team, we continuously get new people, new students all the time. Because we've demonstrated what we're about, what we're proficient in, what we offer, what we can do for somebody. It's pretty simple. Now, is it for everybody? No. But for the right people, boom, you come. And you have to decide. Again, you're in the real estate game. Who? You want to take it to that level? Who are you going to commit to? Who are you going to learn from? Me? The next guy? The person across the street? The local person? Any decision is fine. But figure it out, decide, and move forward, and take it to where it is that you want to take it. Period. But see, this is where you have to start taking stock. Because when you look at the teacher, right? Number one, do they have the results that you want? Do they have the things and are they the type of person that you seek and desire to be? How about their students? I say, how do you judge a teacher? Look at their students. Are their students killing it? Are their students successful or proficient in whatever endeavor we're talking about here? Where they're teaching. Are they the best? Are they good? Are they those people that you would say, hey, I want these to be my peers? Right? That becomes very important in this analysis. analysis. And, and that, definitely, you should take a look because also your core values, do they align with your core values? It's not that that's the only thing or the most important thing, but it definitely should play a factor, right? Because I want to be around people, too, who value the things that I value and, and, and believe, you know, what I believe. It doesn't have to be 100% across the board, but generally speaking, yes, I want some of that similarity, some of that commonality. Because now our association boosts each other we're in line right we're not going to be butting heads as much or at all we're going to be in line helping each other contributing towards each other and both together for the end goal of blank whatever that is so what level and who the next one what's the future what do i want the future to look like a lot of people can't answer this question because this really determines this this course of action that you're going to take when I started, like when I made that uh, one of the last bigger, we can say, life changes and, 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 and changing of chapters when I went from my basketball career to getting into entrepreneurship and real estate, right? Man, before, before anything was really done, I was crystal clear on what the future was going to be like, who I wanted to be, the character traits that I wanted to have, what I wanted to be good at, how much money I would have, how I would walk and talk and what I would own in regards to material things who my friends would be, what types of things I would be doing. I mean, everything was crystal clear to me. So when I made the decision, whew, it was before I knew anything. How long this career would be, how much money would be required. That decision and commitment was made long before any of that. That's why I've been able to move with so much clarity and conviction and purpose and discipline and at such a rapid rate compared to most other people. It's because I was very clear on what the future looked like for me. And this is like a homework assignment I have to give to people all the time because they claim, oh yeah, I want to make 100 grand this year. Well, that's not really your future. That's just this arbitrary number that you put out there. What's behind it? What are you going to do with the money? Right? Then the next year, assuming you get it, what happens next? All that needs to be mapped out for then you to actualize getting the 100,000 and more importantly, actually believing it and having some conviction behind it. But I was clear. Why? Because this is that deep burning desire that keeps the flame stoked throughout every step. There's going to be the ups and the downs every day when you're doing this stuff. But being clear about who you are, where you want to be, and where you're going makes it easier, we can say, to continue. Right? Then it's clear. In this category, I'm just going to take what's available to me. Oh, in this category, though, I got to commit because I want to be number one. So for me, with skills, I committed. I can't tell you how much time I've spent reading going to events, how much money I've spent on building my skills, sales skills, communication, all that stuff. I mean, it's just, it's unreal. But again, by choice. And I said, I want to take it to that level. That's why now, like even on these free tours, some people, uh, you know, that we're in contact with now who, who came in and showed interest in, you know, joining our stuff, like, wow, you know, I just saw Brian for the first time. And for two hours, I was just focused in and I've never been like that listening to somebody exactly that's because of the skills that I've earned and what I can display when I get on stage and talk to people 
I can do that for an hour, two hours, four hours, doesn't matter about anything. But I've paid my dues and I've earned this position by committing and doing whatever it took to get to that level. That was by choice. Now for you, it might be something else, that's fine. But again, you have to be clear about what the future looks like and what you want, what you want to attain, and then you tie it into this and say, okay, this has to line up. So I would recommend that you, the person listening to this podcast, start to become very clear on some of these things and say, okay, and again, this might not be done in five or 10 minutes. This might take you days and days and days to really sit down and say, all right, what do I really want? You know, what are some traits? You know, and it may come up in moments of inspiration. You might see somebody speak like I have. I'm like, man, I want to speak like that. That's the time to write it down and make a mental note. If you're driving and that happens, stop, pull over, take some notes, right? Those are moments of inspiration that pop up that really are, to me, like that guiding compass that you really need to follow. Because when it comes to listening to oneself and one's intuition, people have become very disconnected with that. It's like that same thing when you meet somebody and you just get this weird feeling like, ah, they're not a good person. I always recommend that people listen to that because then if you're wrong, you can apologize, but listen and become more in tune with that intuition because that's the guiding compass to some of these things. There's a reason that stuff is coming up. There's a reason that thought popped up, right? At least acknowledge it so you can look at it later and it doesn't get lost in translation because I can't tell you in the past how many great ideas I fumbled because in that moment of inspiration, I didn't stop and I didn't write it down. Right? Now this helps you become more clear. A lot of people lack purpose and clarity. Well, the clearer you are, the easier and clearer your purpose is. That's what I tell people. I'm very clear about what I want, who I am, my thought process, my core values, and all that stuff. So it's simple for me to know my purpose and all these things. But if you lack connection with self, right? You don't take self accountability. You don't really take any time to really work on yourself and assess your belief systems and kind of your inner workings and you're, and you're out of touch with that. It's going to be difficult for you to be clear about any of this stuff because you're not used to going inward. You're too distracted and you're letting things outside of your internal kind of frame of reference distract you, right? Your phone flipping through it, right? Advertisements, watching YouTube, BSing, and you're, just, uh, you're like in this zombie mode instead of being here and being aware. I'm very aware and present most of the time. It's interesting because sometimes I could be having a conversation with somebody and be totally tuned in and clearly hear the other conversation here simultaneously. That's how sharp my focus and awareness has become is now out of just the ordinary stuff that anybody would do, I can start doing extra stuff. But again, that's come from work, right? Cool. Here's the last one. I'll wrap it up. Everything, absolutely everything is going to have to change. You have to enter a new paradigm, right? The old you needs to be shed to become and step into the new you. And with that goes a lot of stuff. People, maybe some of your hobbies and interests for you to become that new person, right? You guys have heard the stories of me over the years. I used to be Right? And, and we talk about it all the time, like an avid um, athlete, right? So I spent a lot of time, but I also used to waste a lot of time playing video games. And I made a commitment to myself in the beginning saying, I will not touch a video game again, even for pleasure, until I have X amount of money. And I put that on and I completely put it to the side until I hit that figure. Now, even now, do I still play video games? Rarely, a little bit, but nowhere near what I used to. And now I'm in a completely different position. Now, if I really wanted to, I could play them all fucking day, but I don't. I have no desire to. I've changed. So now that I've stepped into the new me, they look at that same activity, me, much differently. You see? Because I've evolved and I've changed. Everything has to change. You want to become that very skilled person in communication? You can't walk around saying, oh, I'm an introvert though. I'm shy. What do I do? That has to change. If that's really how you view yourself, which... In most cases, it's not. You've just been told that and you falsely believe it. That has to change. How can you be a top communicator that captivates audiences if you're just a little shy, introverted person? Right? Oh, I, I get social anxiety and all the other stuff that people say. You can work on that. You can change it. That was conditioned in you. You can condition it out of you. The people that you spend time with, I mean, all this stuff, your environment, right? Your room, your home, your apartment, wherever you live and everything. The sense, the way it looks visually, the symbolism that you have up on the walls, everything has to change, man, for you to, again, transform. 
And this is something that people are not willing to do. Now, again, if you go with what's available to you, very little effort. But if you seek or commit to that grand level, that change is going to be a lot more extreme. And remember, whenever you shift, whenever you have that moment of growth, whenever you take it to the next level, the old world and the old you shatters and it takes you a moment to adjust to that new paradigm, right? And a lot of people always forget that. They forget that. And there's going to be that, that moment or moments of it being very uncomfortable. And that's okay. You need to accept that. It's the same thing when you guys overcome challenges and you, know, you hit these breakthroughs in your career or in your personal life or whatever it is that you're doing, right? Weight loss goals, whatever. Again, the, there is a lot of, ah, and those moments of, shit, this is hard or this is grueling, this is difficult, this is boring, this is monotonous. But at the end is that prize jewel of the trophy or your ideal weight or that income or whatever you want at the end of it. But again, to make it through that path, Again, going through all the obstacles would require a different level of you that maybe has never done that before. And whenever you do something new, that's why you have hesitancy towards it. Because it's an indicator to you. I want to do this, but it's going to require me to change. And then that internal check has to be there that you're committed. Like I brought up earlier. Before I did any of this stuff, the commitment was there and the decision was made. Therefore, whenever these things popped up, they were handled. No matter how hard they were. No matter how hard they were. X amount of money, I'll figure it out. I'll pay it. X amount of time, I'll do it. X amount of focus and awareness, I'll attain it. You have to change this, got it, no problem. No matter how painful that chain was, or change was, sorry. The decision was made. So again, I now follow up with this and I say, with everything having to change, what are you willing to change? What are you willing to change? Because that determines where this goes. Many of you are not willing to change anything, and that's okay. But stop lying to yourself and stop bullshit, bullshitting. You're telling me and everybody else that you want to be the best or be in the top 5% or change this or be this grand person when you're not even willing to do it. Stop. It's, like, it's no different than the person who sits on their couch all day and shares these motivational get-to-work memes. It's like, dude, you're sitting on the couch. Shut up, hypocrite. That doesn't make any sense. But what are you willing to change? And a lot of people, again, are not willing to change anything. And that really sums this thing up. I was willing to change. I literally told my training, uh, um, we can say, uh, principal broker, right? And my first uh, real estate office, right? Shout out to Nelson. I literally told him, dude, if you tell me to scoop up and eat dog shit every day, I'll do it. Now, if that doesn't demonstrate to you that I'm willing to do anything, I don't know what would. Right? I literally said, I will do anything because... What's at the end of this, I want so bad, I'm willing to change 100%. Now, assuming, of course, you're not going to lie, cheat, steal, et cetera, et cetera. I always have to say that, right? I'm not going to take it to that extreme. I'm not going to hurt people, right? But again, I will do whatever it takes to get there. I'm willing to change everything. Shed the old me completely. If that means get rid of all my friends, whatever, I'll do it. Because the attainment of blank, fill that in for you, is worth it to me, hands down. So, again, I ask you, which route are you going to go? The people who are with me are at this route. They're committed, they're disciplined, and they exhibit these qualities that we want. Now, if you're still on the fence, make a choice. But if you're just taking what's available to you and you're coasting along, you're never going to be in the elite. You're never going to be in the top of said category. And that's just the reality. But a lot of people need to be told this so they can make a clear distinction. And the quicker you come to this realization and you take your feelings out of it, the quicker you're going to get on the right path and the quicker you're going to start making some changes. Okay? So as we're wrapping this thing up, guys, I appreciate all the support here for uh, Supreme Being, the podcast. We've really been growing and doing well. Um, you have some links below as well in the description in regards to you guys wanting to reach out to me, check out my stuff, ask me questions, following me on Instagram and all that fun stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, you can keep counting on two episodes a week. I'm going to do my best now that we have the new setup to start potentially interviewing people now that we have the new studio. So stay tuned for a couple of those coming in the future as well. All right. So that's it for this one. We'll see you guys on the next episode. All right. Peace out.